Uh, if it's good enough for Fashion Nova to sell, it's good enough for me to wear to the office Thanksgiving party. I feel like my wardrobe could use a couple more blouses and I want to make this pattern, but I want to make it in like a purple kind of slippery polyester fabric that I am not uh, particularly well versed in sewing. So instead for a wearable mock-up, we are going to be using this uh, fall leaf print fabric, which I feel like is very appropriate for Thanksgiving. So I'm trying to make it in order to wear to my works Thanksgiving potluck. So I ironed a crease in the middle of my fabric remnant and uh, very scientifically zhuzhed the top half into place with just a hair bit of overlap. Hello Erwin, why do you look so sad? This is gonna be cut on the fold and I have this much left over in case I need to like use it for the buttony plackety bit for the back, but the front should just be cut out on the fold. We're, we're chaotically, somewhat scientifically winging it with mild measurement. What could go wrong? Let's try not to burn myself on this hot iron that is slightly off, off of the view of the camera. So what happened with getting this pattern, um, I bought four patterns off of Poshmark um, and the total of the four patterns was $20 plus shipping. And I hear you say to yourself, wow, that is a great deal for authentic vintage patterns. I don't think that that person knows necessarily how to care for vintage patterns because they are selling it for so low. And you'd be correct, they arrived in a Walmart bag uh, in just a flimsy bubble mailer. No shade to this Poshmark seller. I, I do not expect people who sell antiques to just have blanket knowledge that of, of how to care for whatever they inherited from their grandma. I just, I just don't. So no hate to the seller, it's just, um, that's that's not how we store vintage patterns and she she thin she delicate she got a duplicate made of the blouse pattern as as soon as she came out and uh, I I did not photocopy the directions it didn't occur to me when I was handling the pattern so that's just a, a step that we skipped accidentally but um it it's a blouse so how much trouble could it be right Okay, front and back is cut out. Theoretically, if I am doing just the quick method of tucking it into my trousers, I'm not necessarily gonna need to do the darts yeah, because cool. it's gonna be tucked into yeah. trousers or skirts. And I might just have just enough of this leftover to squeeze in a collar. What do you think? Let's uh, mark all these lines in fold them in and iron them in. It was marked out where you needed to fold and everything like that for the uh, button placket in the back and I folded that down and ironed in some uh, double-sided interfacing to keep everything all smoothed down and that was, I, I did not even stitch down the bucket pla button placket, the bucket placket, I didn't even stitch down the button placket, I just used the double-sided interfacing to keep everything uh, s squishy, sandwichy, melty, you know. That, that, that's how we finished that one. Behold, the back, the button pocket for the back. It is not stitched down, but has iron-on interfacing, uh, double-sided iron-on interfacing to keep the button pocket a bit stable, stiff, or, oh, and, and we're not actually gonna sew that, so um, yay. I did originally want to make the collared version. Uh, as you can see now, my mock-up is not collared. Uh, that's a secret surprise that we're gonna get to later. So I cut out all my pieces, including for the collar, though I did uh, skimp a little bit because I was only working with a less than a one yard remnant. So I, I was a little stretched for uh, length, made it a little bit shorter. And because it's a blouse, that's gonna just be tucked into high-waisted skirts and potentially high-waisted trousers. It's not that big of a deal. I am going to put the um, armpit dart for the bust in, but the darts that cinch in the waist, I'm, I'm not gonna bother with. I'm just gonna let my uh, skirt cinch in the blouse at the waist. This pattern has buttons 
in the back um, and just not having that shaping meant that I could tug it up and do the buttons a little bit easier and I'm hypermobile so I can only imagine that it's immensely more frustrating to do your back buttons if you are not hypermobile and it's frustrating for me to do. Uh, so ease a little bit of your back buttoning frustrations up, highly recommend it. Well, originally I started this project at like 2.45, 3 and um, it was just gonna kind of be chill project, seeing how far I could get done, use up some scraps. But now we're meeting some friends at about seven. So it's turned into a timed project again. Time crunch project, didn't mean to do two of those back to back. Uh, but but here we are. Right now I am uh, ironing down this collar using my Taylor's ham to get a nice curve into it. Since the bottom is cut on the salvage, what if we just took a little bit of the interfacing and did a fold fold and ironed that down? Uh, this wasn't necessarily a speed challenge, but I was trying to see if I could do it pretty quickly. So that's one of the reasons why I skipped some of the sewing down the edges. So if I just used the uh, double sided interfacing that gets down the sleeves pretty well. It got down the bottom raw edges pretty well. I know that interfacing is generally a little bit more expensive. Uh, this is something that I got from Goodwill and I don't particularly like it so I'm just going to use it where I can use it and how I can use it. I would not necessarily say that it is a wise idea for you to do because simply it is cost prohibitive. I'm not going to change out of my pajama pants, but instead I'm gonna put this belt on to cinch in the waist a little bit more to kind of give you a better idea. Okay, so this is what it would look like kind of cinched in, which is not bad, but this is really, this is really close to my neck. And it's doing this thing where it, it's all, it's trying to stand up on its own, but I really did not like it last night. I do not like this part still where it looks like it's got like part of my collar is like trying to fly away and pointing out the back. I don't like that. Do I want to just cut the collar off and put some bias tape down because I do not have enough of the leaf fabric to make the facing for the non-collar version. And this this does not feel like it is fitting like the illustration. I do, maybe I put the collar on backwards. Maybe this is supposed to be the back, <sighs> but I think in order for me to wear this to work for the work Thanksgiving function, I am probably going to have to take off this collar and replace it with bias tape because I already have the buttons installed and I have this one flat button right there. Uh, pretty high up to where the collar is. If I use the quarter inch, then I wouldn't have to risk taking out a button or a buttonhole, which I really don't want to do. What is this doing? What is this collar doing? As far as the removal of the collar goes, um, I did cut off the collar, so that took about a half inch out of the uh, seam allowance for the uh, neck hole. So I'm not sure if I just need to try to do a mock-up where I redo the collar or if I uh, do the collar wider and just place it differently on my fashion fabric. Please let me know down in the comments what you would do. I'm a little bit confused. I would prefer to have more collared shirts in my wardrobe than this just because I like the look of the collared shirts a little bit better and I feel like I can wear them under sweaters that way. If this peeks through a sweater, that's a bug, but if it's a collar intentionally peeking out, that's a feature. Oh, my grumpy man. Oh, look at you, my grumpy man. Oh yes, it's my Erwin, he's my grumpy man. Look, look how handsome he is. You've had enough, you've had enough of my shenanigans? Probably. All right, all right, there you go, bye-bye. This is the blouse, I have the bias tape collar facing in. Little top stitch down a little bit wonky, but hey, uh, if it's good enough for Fashion Nova to sell, it's good enough for me to wear to the office Thanksgiving party. I, I don't hate this shirt. I do not dislike this shirt. 
Would I prefer it to have a collar? Yes, absolutely. Uh, do I think maybe in retrospect the collar with this busy of a print was a little um much? Y yeah, I feel like in retrospect definitely, but, but uh, if I make it with a plain colored fabric like I was intending to, then, <coughs> excuse you. If I make it with a plain colored fabric like I was intending to, then I will have a nice colored shirt to add to my collection of nice colored blouses uh, because when, one can never have too many colored blouses in a variety of colors. Thank you for your input, Erwin. He agrees. Because you're my fancy man. Yes, you are my fancy man. Two potential problems that I identified. Perhaps, perhaps uh, the interfacing that I used, maybe I was not actually supposed to use interfacing. So to achieve the color blouse, I will try to try to do it without interfacing on the next one. The second thing, I did not mark out on my bodice the notch three that the collar was supposed to align to, and I thought that I did, but I didn't. So I, I really think that I might have just put the collar on backwards. Overall, I am definitely satisfied with this. It will be worn to the office Thanksgiving party and maybe the Thanksgiving with the relatives, the in-laws, so. Overall, I'm pretty satisfied with the fit. It said that it was fit for a 30 inch bust. This definitely has some positive ease to it. I am um, more than a 30 inch bust and this, I would say this fits me just fine. Okay, I got just the plain brooch on because the shirt is really busy for like a uh, intricate decorative brooch. So I just got like the plain gold spiral, just a maroon plain skirt and a loafers with fox socks. But this is my outfit for the Thanksgiving potluck. Now I gotta go because I'm running late. One criticism to myself, uh, if you are doing a mock-up and need to put on buttons, maybe you should try it on before you put in your buttons and buttonholes um, to make sure that you like the collar placement because I, I did not like whatever was going on with the collar and was um, scared to modify some of the modificationiness because of the buttons. The microphone's definitely picking up the dog snoring. Oh, 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 oh. Penny, are you visible? Are you on camera? Yeah. She heard that I was talking mad schmack and was like, have you know I've been taking Taekwondo oh. lessons in the back of a Walmart super center. So you don't want to mess with me. But also maybe she just needs some snuggles. She doesn't know. Uh, moral of the story is that I really need to review some videos on how to install a collar on a flat front blouse uh, before reattempting this pattern, just to review, get it fresh in my mind, and so that I am not as thoroughly confused uh, as, as I was in this round. Uh, let me know if you have any tips along with any questions, comments, or concerns down below. New video should be up on Fridays. Not every Friday though, so if you like this kind of vintage sewing chaotic content, feel free to like this video, hit subscribe, and hit that little bell icon so you when I actually do post. Thank you for watching. Stay happy, stay healthy, and we'll see you next time. Bye! Erwin's complaining that Bear didn't eat all his food? because Erwin wants Bear's food. Erwin just wants permission to eat Bear's food. Over here? Yeah, good girl. Very good. You followed directions. Oh, good boy, Bear. What a sleepy potato. You're not just a potato, you're a whole roasted ham.